fair winds and following seas everyone hope you're having a great day i recently received a comment in one of my videos asking for a tutorial on how to get the gyro error using another celestial body like a star so on this video we'll be doing just that specifically i'll be discussing the step-by-step -step guide for obtaining the gyro error using a star's azimuth via the a b c method and a calculator method this process is similar to finding the sun's true bearing for this tutorial, we will need a nautical almanac, the Norris nautical table, and a calculator. In addition, I'll also show you a calculator I made that automatically solves for a star's true bearing and altitude with only your position, the date, and time observation as inputs. But before that, let's dive in. Suppose these are given. The date observation on April 12, 2025. The type of observation 012946 UTC, position in latitude and longitude, your gyro course is 044.5 degrees, uh, per standard compass course is 102 degrees, and the absorbed star is Spica, with a gyro bearing of 150.5 degrees, and we will also need to find its sidereal or angle or SHA, the declination, and local or angle or LHA. For our calculations later, we will only need these numbers, the latitude, the declination, and the LHA. Now before we get down the rabbit hole, we must know why we need those values. And the reason is this. To find A, we have to know the value of our latitude and the LHA of the star. To find B, we have to know the declination of the star and the LHA of the star. And C takes the sum or difference of A and B depending on the sign. So let's proceed to the calculation. First is to get the true LHA of the star, the spica. To get the true LHA, let's follow this formula. Those colored in blue are the given ones we can find in the nautical almanac. We already have our longitudes, so let's put that entry here. Next is to get your nautical almanac and find the date of our observation on the daily pages for April 12, 2025. You can see the dates here in three consecutive days, April 10, 11, and 12, UTC, or Thursday, Friday, and Saturday respectively. Below them are tables for Aries, Venus, and other planets including the stars. The GHA of Aries and the stars table would be the most important here. So going back, our April 12 falls on Saturday, which is this table here. Now, key in the time observation, which is 0100 UTC. Find the JHA of Aries, in this case, is 215 degrees, 29.5 minutes. On the right hand most, look for the star Spica and note down its sidereal hour angle or SHA and declination. Negative declination comes with a solidly sign. Next, let's go to the increments and corrections page for our GHA since the tabulated one here is only for 0100 hours. We must look for the remaining 29 minutes 46 seconds tabulation for Aries which we can find in, the, in this part of the book. That would give us 7 degrees 26.5 minutes. To get the true GHA of Aries, let's add these values. That would give us 222 degrees and 56 minutes. To convert that to the GHA of Spica, this is where its SHA comes in. Let's add the SHA to the true GHA of Aries, and that will give us 381 degrees and 17.8 minutes. Now since it exceeds 360 degrees, let's subtract it by 360 degrees. Now that would give us 0 to 1 degrees and 17.8 minutes as the true GHA of the star Spica. To get the LHA, let's subtract our longitude since it is westerly. If the longitude is west, subtract. If east, add. As you can see in this equation, we are gonna arrive at a negative answer. But this cannot be. So to fix that, let's add 360 degrees to our LHA. And we will have the true LHA of Spica at 339 degrees, 8.56 minutes east. Why east? Here's the naming rule. West, if LHA is between 0 degrees and 180 degrees. East, if LHA is between 180 degrees and 360 degrees. Now that we have everything we need, spike us through LHA, 
a declination and the observer's latitude, let's get our notice table and tabulate these numbers. This is our setup. So for A, we have to use the latitude and LHA. For B, declination and LHA. And C takes the sum or difference of A and B. We have to add if A and B have same names or subtract if A and B have different names. First, let's find A. Get your Norris nautical table and look for the LHA. And our LHA is between 339 degrees and 339 degrees 30 minutes. Next, our latitude, 29 degrees 30.2 minutes. It would be between 29 and 30 degrees. So let's see where they intersect. Now you notice that our given values aren't in whole numbers. To fix this, we have to interpolate. I discussed how to make a proper interpolation on my other video, which is finding the gyro error using the sun. Link in the comment. So check it out. Okay, so for our A, it is somewhere at 1.48. To know the sign, be it north or south, the rule is stated on the side of the page saying, named opposite to latitude except when our angle, our LHA, is between 90 and 270 degrees. Since our LHA is 339, definitely not between 90 and 270, we will name it opposite to latitude, hence south. Finding B is easy since it's close by just on the next page and the process is similar LHA on the top and this time declination on the left or right side applying interpolation will give us 0 0.56 for the sign B is always named the same as declination which in our case is south now that we have our A and B values let's add them together because they have the same signs and let's carry on the southern design for the previous rules. We are almost there folks, so if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. To find the azimuth, let's go to table C. The value of C and latitude is all we need to find our azimuth. So in table C, key in 2.04 and our latitude 29 degrees 30.2 minutes somewhere between 28 and 30 degrees we should be getting 29.25 now let's apply the sign stated here our c correction is south and our lha is east would give us a quadrantal angle of s 29.25 east to put that into perspective here is where our answer lies to convert that into true azimuth, let's subtract 180 from our answer since it is in the second quadrant. So we should get 150.75 degrees true or simply 150.8 degrees true. Next, we will use the calculator method. The calculator method also needs the values of A, B, and C, but instead of flipping pages in the nautical tables and almanac, we will use some maths. But it is very easy. Here are the formulas. The naming rules are the same, so I'm gonna speed run this one a bit. Let's apply the calculations. First, check that your calculator is set to degrees and not radians. I'm using Google search calculator and as you can see, there are no values for minutes. I must convert the minutes in decimal format in order to proceed. To do this, divide the minutes by 60 and add it to the degree number, or in my case, I'll be using another tool to do just that. Here it is. Let's do the same for the rest. Our calculator method yielded as 150.6 degrees true. So cross check, I will use the gyro error calculator. The tool is under development but let's see what answer we get. The answers are actually very close. Our ABC method yielded us 150.75 degrees true. Calculator method gave us 150.6 and the online tool 150.7. The differences are due to the underlying formulas and how they process the numbers down to the nth decimal places. Okay now, so let's solve for a gyro error using the ABC method as the azimuth. Here's the formula. Gyro bearing minus true bearing equals gyro error. 150.5 minus 150.8 equals 0 0.3 degrees. 
So determine if it's easterly or westerly, use this rule. Gyro bearing best, arrow is west. Gyro bearing less, then the true bearing, arrow is east. In our case, we will use east. That's it. To wrap it up, here's what we went through. Thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope you learned well. Comment down below your suggestions or questions if you have any. May the winds be in your favor.